Disappearance of Rachel Mellon's Camp In this video, we'll talk about the disappearance of a bubbly and bright young girl Rachel Mellon's Camp. What happened to her? What events detectives found disturbing after 13-year-old vanished from her home? What was the reason behind her disappearance? What the authorities have to say about this sudden disappearance of a young girl? So, don't go anywhere and stick with us till the end of the video to get to know what exactly happened to her. Without any further delay, let's buckle up and jump right into the video. Rachel Mary Mellon Skemp was born on October 13, 1982, to parents Amy and Jeff Skemp in Melrose Park, Illinois. At the age of three, her parents divorced. Her mother remained living in Bolingbroke, Illinois, while her father relocated to Dallas, Texas. In 1985, Amy, age 26, began a relationship with a man by the name Vincent Mellon, age 19. Vince moved in with Amy and Rachel, and together the couple had two children, Jason in 1988 and Ashley in 1990. Rachel was a bubbly and bright young girl, always smiling in spite of her unstable home life. At the time of her disappearance, Rachel attended Bernard J. Ward Middle School, where she was an honor student. Many of her friends remember her as the life of the party and always the most beautiful girl in the room. Rachel had a best friend, Carrie, whom she remained close to until the time of her disappearance. Despite her cheerful demeanor, Rachel's life at home wasn't always happy. In 1990, when she was 8 years old, her parents got into a fight. Amy filed a restraining order against Vincent for hitting her, pushing her down the stairs, and making verbal threats against Rachel. The restraining order was eventually dropped and Amy and Vincent got back together. Five years later in the spring of 1995, Rachel ran away from home, leaving a note that explained she was afraid she would be blamed for something her younger siblings broke. She slept outside of her friend's house that night and then called her step-grandparents in the morning, who took her back home. In summer of 1995, Rachel went to spend one month with her father Jeff in Dallas, Texas. While there, she begged her uncle to help her move to Texas believing that she would be better off in the custody of her father than with her mother. Rachel returned to Bolingbroke later that summer. The last day that Jeff heard from his daughter Rachel was on December 25th, 1995. The following day, January 31st, 1996, was a day of strange circumstances. What events took place that day? 13-year-old Rachel decided to stay home from school that day due to a sore throat. Accompanying her at home was her unemployed stepfather, Vince, and their German shepherd, Duke. January 31st was a particularly frigid day, 20 degrees Fahrenheit and a snowy with gusty high winds. At 10.45 a.m., Rachel wearing a pink sweatshirt with yellow pants and red slippers phoned her paternal grandmother, Lucy Scamp, to thank her for the Christmas gifts she had sent. Lucy stated that the phone call lasted about five minutes and towards the end of the phone call, Rachel got very quiet. Her grandmother asked, is he there? Referring to Vincent, and Rachel replied, yes, before stating she had to go. According to Vince, after the phone call ended, he and Rachel played Nintendo for roughly an hour or so before she returned to her bedroom to take a nap. He states that the last time he saw her, she was in her bed wrapped in a blue blanket. At 2.30 p.m. when Rachel was still napping, Vince claims that he, during a negative 20 degree blizzard, took the family dog Duke out for a walk. He left the front door unlocked. During the 30 minute walk, Wentz claims that Duke slipped out of his collar and began chasing a rabbit in a nearby field. Wentz then left the dog, believing that he'd find his way back to the family residence, and returned home at roughly 3 p.m. He claims that he did not check on Rachel when he returned home. At 3.15 p.m., Rachel's younger half-sibling Ashley returned home from school, noticing that Rachel was not home. A real estate agent who saw Duke running up and down the street recognized that the dog had belonged to the Melkin Scamp residence and returned the dog between 4.30 p.m. and 5 p.m. It was not until 5 p.m. when Amy and her son Jason got home that the Bolingbroke police were called. When the police arrived hours later and searched Rachel's room, they were stunned to discover that her coat, shoes, wallet, purse, and Walkman were all still in her room during such a brutally cold snowstorm. Her blue blanket that she had slept in was missing as well as the two pillows she had on her bed. Police checked the door and found no signs of forced entry. They questioned Vince about the multiple scratches and cuts that were on his arm, to which he replied that he was doing car work earlier during the day. An extensive search of the area was done on ground, air and water using geothermal images and drones. But still, no sign of Rachel turned up. Her bank account had been untouched and their airports were checked to make sure that she hadn't run away to Dallas to be with her father. Still no sign of Rachel. During the investigation, the authorities found a diary in Rachel's room, which stunned them. Authorities have stated that they believe foul play was involved. After Rachel's disappearance, her friends came forward to police to say she was seen crying by her locker at school on the day before she went missing. When her friends asked what was wrong, she only said that she had a problem. 
but that she would take care of it herself. She would not offer more information, so her friends let it go. Police learned from Rachel's diary that she had problems with the stepfather before she disappeared. They also found a book called Daddy Kisses and a steak knife hidden under her bed. Vincent has long been considered a possible suspect, but has never been charged. He had scratches on his arms after her disappearance, which he said were from working on his car. Jeff Skimp also tried to find her daughter, but all in vain. Jeff Skimp, Rachel's father, had received a telephone call from his father stating that Rachel had gone missing from her home. Jeff quit his job in Dallas and moved to Bolingbrook, Illinois, hoping to aid in the search of his daughter. Jeff cites that while at the Mellon Skimp residence, he confronted Vince about what happened to Rachel, to which Vince replied, someone must have snatched her while I was out walking the dog. Jeff has kept the same phone number since 1996 and hopes that one day Rachel will call him. The case has gone ice cold, with no signs of Rachel and no leads or tips in the case. What events happened later in January 2000? In January of 2000, four years after Rachel's disappearance, a grand jury obtained a warrant to receive Vince's DNA samples. On January 29th, police obtained a warrant to get blood, saliva, and hair samples from Vincent for a grand jury. Newspapers from the time report that Amy was up question for almost nine hours, but she maintained her theory that her husband was innocent and that she believed Rachel was still alive. While Vincent was questioned for less than an hour after repeatedly invoking his Fifth Amendment rights. Much to the dismay of the rest of Rachel's family, the grand jury investigation ended without any indictments being handed down. What was the later developments that took place in March 2001 and May 25, 2002? In March of 2001, Amy claimed that Rachel called her phone three separate times within three minutes. This has never been proven. Sometime after Rachel went missing, Amy and Vincent moved away from Illinois and no longer cooperated with the Bolingbrook police. On May 25, 2002, the city of Bolingbrook dedicated a tree to Rachel at Whitfler Park in Bolingbrook, right across the street from the house he disappeared in. They also buried a time capsule in Rachel's memory. The search still continues to find her. Though the case is old, the Bolingbrook PD insists the search for Rachel continues. The case is rather active, said Lieutenant Carter Larry, a spokesman for the Bolingbrook Police Department. Jeff held a memorial service for Rachel on January 28, 2006. Allowing her friends and family to gather, share stories about Rachel, and to grieve, it warms my soul, Jeff said to a TV reporter. I'm glad I'm a believer in God because ultimately, justice is waiting. Rachel's father, Jeff, and her best friend, Carrie, continue to bring awareness to Rachel's strange disappearance. No one has ever been charged in the disappearance of Rachel Mellon, and she's never been found. We are all aware that this is a really weird and mysterious tale of a child. In context of everything that has been said, what are your thoughts? What do you think was the reason behind her disappearance? Please share your thoughts with us in the comments area. Well, we have reached the end of today's video. If you enjoyed watching this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching.